and Tamara here. Today I'm going to walk you through all of the steps that I used to make my rag quilt turtle. I used this pattern here. I will link it down below along with everything else that I used for this tutorial. I did do a few things differently from the actual pattern. So as you follow through this video, make sure to pay attention to those few little different things that I did. So let me show you my rag quilt turtle. This one is for my nephew, and he is a big Vancouver Canucks fan. So, well, should I say he? I mean, he just turned three. Should we just say my brother is the Canuck fan and he's raising another one? <laughs> Anyways, this is the turtle. Here, it's kind of hard to get in frame. I'll insert a photo. It's about the size that you can throw on a twin bed. Now before I jump into the tutorial, I am going to tell you a few things that I did differently right off the bat and then the rest I'll just sprinkle throughout the video. The pattern really wants you to cut all the batting the same size as your fabric and then I guess it's not quite clear but you must have to cut the excess out before you start doing all that snipping. I find that really annoying. So I would rather just cut my fabric the size of the pattern and then I'll cut my batting the inlay size, which I do for all of my rag quilts. Like those square rag quilts, you never cut your batting the same size as the square, you cut it smaller. So that's what I did here, but because of that, you have to add a few extra seams as you go. So pay attention while you're sewing because once this thing goes through the washing machine, you don't want that batting to move. So throughout this tutorial, I will definitely show you where I added extra stitches. The second main thing that I do differently from the pattern itself is how I cut out the pattern pieces. Okay, so if you look at the pattern, you'll see that when you cut out the pattern, they actually want you to cut out this square piece here. And I don't do that. I don't do that for any of the pieces because I did it once, I did it when I did the dinosaur pattern and it actually creates a lot of holes within your rag quilt. If you're not paying attention while you're doing all of your seams, you can create those holes. So you do need to be careful, but you don't have to be as careful if you just keep that piece square and treat it as any other rag quilt. If you've never made a rag quilt before, I do suggest following my rag quilt tutorial on how to make just a standard rag quilt because once you've made one rag quilt, you'll understand what I mean about this square piece here. If you wanna do anything at all, just cut a single snip down the edge there. I will do that depending on the piece and then it will be much easier to sew with less holes in your rag quilt when you're done. I mean, you cut up a whole bunch of fabric, you sew it together, the last thing you wanna do when it's all said and done is see a few holes in your seams. Like the holes would end up, if you're looking at the back of the rag quilt, the holes would end up like right here. I'm gonna have to fix that when I'm done. So just ignore that part of the pattern, keep those pieces nice and square, and then you won't have that problem. And then you'll just have extra fabric on the front end and that's totally fine because you snip it all anyways, nobody will see. So anyways, I think that I have said my piece. Why don't we just jump right into the tutorial? All right, so let's get started. I've laid out all of the fabric pieces that I have cut ahead of time as well as the fabric and I have the fabric numbered for each section. That way I don't get confused when I'm actually cutting out all of the fabric. I like to double up my fabric layers when I know that I need more than two pieces for each pattern piece. So here I have it folded to four, four pieces so that it's just easier to cut out. And of course, as I mentioned earlier, when I do cut out these pattern pieces, I do try not to cut in those corners here. I started cutting the corners and then I remembered that I don't like to do that. So I stopped doing that after this. Another thing I would highly recommend investing in is a pair of high quality sewing scissors. I'll link that in the description down below. I find it makes a huge difference on how your project goes when it's a lot easier to cut out your pieces. So here I'm just trying to show you what I meant when I said snip those corners, but it's such a dark blue, it's hard to see. And we'll move on to the batting. 
For the batting, I have it folded in half so that when I cut each piece, I can get two pieces out of each cut. And again, as I explained earlier, I do try to cut my batting smaller than what the pattern requests, which does mean a few extra added stitches later on, but I think it's worth it because batting is pricey and I just don't see the point in wasting batting by cutting extra. And then you've got the extra work of having to cut out all of the excess batting once it's all sewn together. It just, it doesn't seem like an easy way to do it. So I switched it up. As much as I love sewing, I'm always looking for the easiest way to make it happen. And here are all of the pieces cut out and waiting to be sandwiched together. It's time to sew! So this is that center piece of the turtle, and every time I would sew a section, I would put the batting in between. This one I sewed all of the points together, which was part of the pattern instructions. These pieces here, I also followed the pattern instructions where I would do the crisscrosses. At a certain point, I started to chain stitch these because it just goes a lot faster. And now onto the tail. Here I'm gonna show you how I tend to mark where my stitches will go before I sew them. So I've got that center piece in there. And now I'm just gonna use pins. Oh, sorry, marking special seam. And now I'm just gonna use pins and I will mark where they want me to sew those extra seams. And I find that's all I need to be able to sew a decent line. All you really need is something that's gonna hold that batting in place anyways. And for the tail and the feet and the head, I will also sew around the edge ahead of time before I attach it to the blanket itself. And on to the eyes. I can't remember if in the pattern it does suggest to put batting in the center or not. I do not put batting in the top dot. I will put it in that green second dot because as you're adding the top dot, it will make sure the batting can stay into place. And here I use the pattern as my template to make sure that the eyes are placed in the correct spot before I add them onto the head. This part of course is so much easier to do before the head is attached to your blanket. Now talking about planning the edges, I think I did mention it just a little bit ago, but I will sew around the feet, the tail, and the head before I attach them to my blanket. It makes it so much easier than having to do it later. And as far as extra seams go, I didn't need to add too many. I added a top one to this foot and I added an extra seam to the green pieces, those large green pieces, right down the center there. But as for the rest, even cutting the batting small, it really did not need a lot of extra seams. And now it's time to sew all of these pieces together. For those curves, I'll make a few extra snips. Just make sure that they're not too deep. That way, when you actually are sewing them together, your snips haven't gone past that seam. And you can see what I mean about those extra snips right here on this green fabric. The snips are not past where my seam needed to be. So now that the individual pieces have been sewn into their triangle sections, it's time to sew those triangle sections together which is a really easy thing to do because it's a nice straight seam. And now for probably the most finicky piece of the entire blanket, it's time to add that center piece on to the back of the turtle. Now, while you do this, just all I can say is it takes patience. That's all I can say. You'll get it. You'll be able to do it. I promise. All right, so now we just have to add the tail and the feet and the head to the main portion of the blanket. Do the same thing as what we did before. Cut little snips along each piece. That way it curves nicely and makes it easier to attach. Oh, 
Okay, I thought I was recording. I was not. So I will say it again. This turtle I have laid so that the ragging portion is laying face down and I have pinned all of the feet onto the blanket. That way, you look here, the blanket has the feet pinned that way and then of course once it's flipped over, the feet will be angled forward, which is what I want. But what I just realized is if you flip the head over, it will be upside down because right now it's facing upwards. Pinned it like that, and I actually need to flip it over and pin it in the other direction. That way, the face is on the ragged side. All right, I have said my piece. So let that be a lesson to you before you do this final seam. Make sure your pieces are facing in the right direction. And then all you have to do is one final seam around the entire thing and your rag quilt will be done. And that is how you make a rag quilt turtle. I hope you enjoyed the sewing process with me. If you like this video, please subscribe, hit that like button, hit the notification bell if you wanna receive more creative content from me. Oh, when you are finally done your rag quilt, I have a whole tutorial, I think it's up here. I have a whole tutorial that I will link up here that will walk you through all the steps of how to wash your rag quilt. That way you don't wreck your washing machine and you don't wreck your rag quilt. All right, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.